Good morning, y'all. I'm Marlene Bush, and this is Stitching by the Lake. And today is Sunday, October 22nd. Normally, I'd be at church at this particular time, uh, but we're doing church online today. Uh, Jerry's had some dermatology stuff done on his face, and it's looking pretty nasty. So we decided we'd stay home and stay away from germs. Might get in there. Uh, as he's healing. I'm so thankful for online church. It's just been wonderful. That's the one good thing that I can see coming out of COVID. As a matter of fact, y'all, it is so beautiful in Arkansas right now. It has been for a couple of weeks. Now, we're dry as a bone. We sure do need some rain. But the days are beautiful. The leaves are beginning to turn. Uh, it's actually going to be a little bit warm today, maybe up 85-ish uh, by this afternoon, but the mornings and the evenings are so cool and just absolutely wonderful, wonderful times to be outside. Not that I'm outside a whole lot because y'all know I'm sort of a homebody and I'm in the house a lot. It's been a minute since I've been here. We've had several things going on. You know, I thought when I retired that things would be a little bit calmer and a little bit more peaceful, but they're not. We have lots of things going on. Too many of them are doctor's appointments, of course, when you get to be this age. But um, I do have, I couldn't come any sooner, honestly, because I didn't have much to show you. I did do Sampler September, and I started six things, which I'm going to show you. Some of the starts are pitiful, but they're starts. And I have two finishes, and I have a whip. And a couple of more starts that I'm thinking about doing. So we're going to talk about those. And I've got some gifts that some folks sent me. I don't always show those, but today I had, I didn't, usually it's because I run out of time. But today I think I'm going to have enough time to do that. And, and then I bought a couple of things that I want to show you. So first off, I'm going to do Sampler September. And these are not in any order at all. Um... I started the Little Red House Sampler by Brenda Gervais. And I got this um, at the what was then called the Midwest Cross Stitch Retreat in 2019. And now it is Farm Girl Dry Goods, I believe is the name that uh, Michelle is calling that. I have not been able to go back there. That makes me very, very sad. I loved Iowa. Uh, Amana, Iowa is one of the more beautiful places I've ever been in the fall. It was just stunning. But as you know, I'm trying to cut back a little bit on my travel. Uh, me being out of uh, touch is uh, not great for Jerry. He likes for me to be here, and I like being here, so that's a good thing. This is the sampler. I hope the glare. Oh, yeah, that's not too bad. Um this is a beautiful, beautiful sampler. It's a little on the large side for size for me. I'm not a big stitch kind of person, but I love it so much that I really want to do this. It's 344 wide by 212 high stitches. And the kit came with the weeks, the gentle arts, and the classic color works that are called for. Um, let me show you the colors. Because they're so, so pretty. And they're a mess, but y'all know I'm messy with my threads. There, isn't that pretty? I think it is. And let's see if I have the fabric written down here. 32 count platinum and this is all the start that I got but I don't think that's too bad this satin stitch it was it was something else I wonder let me turn a light on here I'm in my comfy clothes as you can see okay let me see if that's going to help on our, yeah, that, that sheds some pretty good light on there. 
I typically stitch with one thread over two on a 32 count. But when I tried the satin stitch, that did not work at all. Um, so I went back and did it with two, th took all that out and went back and did it with two threads and it's much better, but honest to goodness, it could have used three. I do believe because of the, it, some of these stitches are, uh, threads are irregular. Uh, the threads in the linen are irregular. So I'm doing two threads on the flowers there as well. Beautiful fabric and beautiful colors and a beautiful pattern. And like I said, it's from 2019, so it's not a new one. It's one I've had on my shelf for four years now. Um, sometimes I get carried away by the new ones when I've got old ones that are just gorgeous sitting there waiting for me. And I know some of y'all do the same thing. This is the bag from Stitch Folk that I got at the attic. And in it, I have, now I get the name of this one wrong every time. I wait for the Lord. Sometimes I call it, I wait upon the Lord. And this one I bought at the attic. Loved it. The model was just beautiful. And I couldn't wait to start it. It is done on, let's see, let me look at my working copy here. Um, I actually have some lakeside linen that I'm stitching this on. It called for 40 count, which I am not doing. It's 198 stitches wide and 216 inches high. And I am using toasted coconut from Forbidden Fibers is the fabric. And I'm using NPI Dose Skin. 953. I don't think I told you the designer. It's Hands to Work Revisited. That's what it's called. This is the thread that I'm using. It's a greenish brown. And I like the way it's turning out. I actually got a good little bit done on this one. Don't you think that's pretty? I do. I think I'm going to be really happy with this one when it's finished. And who knows when that will be, but not this year, for sure, between now and December, because I have several other things to do. Whoops, I left something out of the little red house. I'll put it right there. And I started... Most of the ones I started are monochrome. This one is Maggie Pepperell 1887 and it's from Red Barn Samplers. So sweet. This one's not going to take a great long time to do. It's only 81 by 93. But I love it so much. Um... Ray, who is the designer for Red Barn Samplers, is the sweetest lady. And let's see, I'm using a 32 count fawn for this. Didn't get too much of a start on it. And I'm using berry wine from Victorian Motto Samplers. Um, beautiful color, really beautiful color. I wish I had a, several of these um, skeins. But I did at least to get part of the border done in the first letter. So I felt good about that. There were times in September that I didn't get to stitch. Um, 
maybe a whole week, other things interfered with my playtime. This one is Anna Lagoya by Shakespeare's Peddler. And I'm using Gloriana Poinsetta. And I don't know what the fabric is. And I don't even know for sure if it's a 28 or a 32, but I think it's a 28. I'm not positive. This is, it's out of this book right here called Red Letter Day by Teresa Vanette. And she is Shakespeare's peddler. Uh, let me see if I can find a picture that doesn't have the pattern on it. Here's one. I love the way she finished it. Very sweet. I have, I think, eight red work um, cross-stitch finished pieces that are framed. And I would like to have a red work um, wall, which would mean changing everything in my <laughs> bedroom where I have everything hung. But I, I actually got quite a bit done on this one, too. And isn't it going to be gorgeous? I'm just not sure what this fabric is. It's a sort of a light gray with a brown hint. I don't know. It was in my stash and I thought it would be perfect. The fifth one is Brigida Vizzoli, 1871, and it's Hands Across the Sea. I'm using a 32 count lakeside. I don't know the color. And I'm using Gloriana Schoolhouse Red. This is the pattern. And this is where I am. This looks like straw, doesn't it? I don't know. It's not straw, but it looks kind of like straw. You can't really see the color. It's much, much golder than it's showing up on that screen. And then the last one that I started, oh yeah, is another Red Barn sampler. It's a Dorothy Stretton sampler. Yeah. This one is, uh, let's see. 110 by 149, so not very big. She stitched it on 40 count flannel flower linen from Fox and Rabbit, but I did not uh, have that. And I'm stitching it on a 28 count white chocolate. And I'm using a Weeks Dye Works. Well, this is a little bitty part of a skein. I've used most of one. This is what it looks like, the green that I'm using. And this is my start. Okay, that's Sampler September, all six of them. Then I had two finishes, putting this all back in the tray here so I won't lose it. Lady Dot Creates needle book that was at one of our samplers, oh, one of our samplers, one of our retreats, the attic I think. <laughs> this is what the inside looks like. I learned a lot from her. Um, isn't that sweet? I learned a lot uh, finishing things 
uh, that was just wonderful. And then my other finish is, I don't think I brought the pattern in here, but you've seen it. I've shown it before. Joyous Noel by Blackbird Designs. And this is my finish. It had a year on it, and I left that off. I chose to leave it off. This fabric, by the way, is um, 32 count fiber on a whim, cream and sugar. I'm going to take this one this week to get it framed. I want it to be done before Christmas, and it will be if I take it now. I think it's just gorgeous. It is not typical Christmas colors. It's much more typical of Blackbird Designs and their color choices. And Well, really even brighter than that. Maybe it's... Um, Part of a reproduction. I don't know. I didn't. I don't remember reading that. Uh, but very pretty. I did make a couple of mistakes down there in the border somewhere, but you know they're just leaves, so I figured they could be kind of random, and that wouldn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me, so that's really all that counts, isn't it? Um, and then I think I worked on, this may be exactly what I showed you last time. I don't know. But I think I worked on this. Um, and uh, it is this for Sarah. And I don't know where my pattern is. I've got my working copy here. I bought this at the attic. Um... I'm trying to find a picture to show you. I always take one. There we go. The frame at the top is the one I'm aiming for. And I did not do the same fabric that they did. That was a little too modeled for me. Um, I chose a lakeside linen. Uh, it's a limited edition. So it doesn't really have a name. I was looking for the stitch count uh, 182 by 168 and I'm using Belsois Cranberry you can't see it up like that but this is what it looks like I love these dark reds I seem to be drawn to them more than I do the bright reds and this is how far I've gotten, and I apologize if it's just a repeat, but surely I worked on it some last month, or this month. Uh, I'd say I'm probably a little over half through. I'd like to get it finished and framed before Christmas as well, not for any particular reason, because I'm not giving it as a Christmas gift this year. Um, I, th I wanted to show you... Excuse me, y'all. My cough is gone. Hallelujah. But my throat still gets real dry. Um, I wanted to show you this piece, and I think I've shown it to you at least twice before. I have a friend who has now, she was in my neighborhood, and she's now moved to independent living. And this piece was a gift from her friend who cross-stitched it for her when she was about 90 and gave it to her. And Miss Betty hung it on her front door for several years. Um, and she gave it to me when she moved, and I've been hanging it on mine. I know nothing um, about the pattern name. Uh, a lady named Margaret Bustard stitched it and I'm sure Miss Margaret is no longer living Miss Betty is I think it is just exquisite it has the most beautiful colors I'm not a purple person but isn't it gorgeous I hope when I'm 90 I'm still stitching like that don't y'all I had a couple of purchases um, at a flea market. I found this frame. I'm not going to hang it with these like this, but I know that I have 
a couple of patterns that are long and thin like this and I'm going to adjust my fabric to whatever I need to to get them to fit on here because I loved the frame so much. It's from at home dot com at home America maybe and then I found this frame and bought it thinking that it might work for this for Sarah but forgetting that this for Sarah is square and this is a rectangle so it won't work for that but isn't it a nice frame I'll use it for something and I found I've at the last two retreats I've been to, I've had friends give me pin cushions down in salt cellars, and I wanted to make some of those. And I found four. There, uh, these are all just regular little salt cellars. They're all just alike. Um, but I found this that was very unique. It's an eye wash cup. If you look, it's shaped, I don't know how you can see that. It's shaped like an eye, like in an oval. And apparently, it was used to, to wash out your eye, like this. I'm going to make a pin cushion out of that. That'll be fun. Okay. Some gifts I've gotten. I um, had a friend a couple of weeks ago who sent me some fabric and some patterns. There's like three pieces in here. This one is for a particular pattern and it is this one. Chilly Willy. Is he not a cutie? I'm sure I won't get this done this winter. Well, maybe I'll get it done in the winter, but not for Christmas. Love, love, love it. And this piece is for a Liz Matthews Christmas tree, the first day of Christmas. And I have those patterns somewhere, but I'm not sure right where they are at this moment. And then he sent me Christmas snow cones. Look at this adorable creepy pumpkin stacker. <laughs> so cute. Oh, there's my Joyous Noel pattern. You don't go in there, honey. You go over there. And this from um, Hands Across the Sea was sent to me as well. I think I'm going to make a um, bag. And then more fabric and patterns. I wonder if I could make this tiny town fit that long pattern. I think it might be too long for this tiny town. Is that not the cutest thing? This is the harvest one. And uh, the Humility Sampler by Heartstring Sampler. A Chessie and Me Across the Sea. Home for Christmas by Plum Street. And she sent this fabric from Silk Weaver that I'm going to use for that. That'll be fun. Um, friendship Garden and more fabric. And question. Did somebody send this to me or did I buy this? Does anybody know? How would you know? I don't know. How would I know? That tells me I've bought too many things. I think I bought this one. <laughs> And I think the reason why I bought this one was for that right there. 
love it. I think about this at Quilter Station Retreat. I don't know. All right, I'm almost through. Just a couple of more things I want to mention. I've noticed where several people have um, a Sunday stitch. And even though they only stitch it on Sunday, they seem to get a lot done. I really, really want this pattern, though he seemeth sleeping, to be finished. I love this. The first time I saw it, Cynthia Brew was stitching it. And I started it on a 28 count lakeside buttercream with the cultivar threads, which are all over the place on what I have worked on, so I apologize for that. But I've gotten a good bit done. Look at that. Don't you think if I started this on Sundays? Um, this is about halfway across the page. And then this border right here is halfway. So that's a fourth. That's a fourth of it. How long do you think it would take me if I only stitched on Sundays? And let's say I stitched two or three hours on Sundays on that. I tried Sunday stitches once before, and y'all know I'm terrible at schedules. I'm kind of like Carol, salt box stitcher. I don't, I don't want anybody bossing me, and I, not even me. And I have one new start planned. Bought this at the attic. Saw it, saw the model stitch, and fell in love. Just wonderful. So pretty stitched up, y'all. So pretty. I have not yet pulled threads for it. This pattern is from... I'm not trying to pronounce that. It's French. I could call my granddaughter. She's a French major. Uh, she was, she graduated with a French degree. Um, and she could say it for me. I'm going to use 36 count slate. This is the color. Don't you think this is, who knows what that's calling for, but this is what I'm going to stitch it on. I think it's going to be perfect. All right. I think that's it. I'm under 30 minutes, which is good for me. I like being under 30 minutes. It doesn't take very long to upload when I'm under 30 minutes. I hope that all of you are well. Um, I debated and debated about whether I was going to say anything at all about the war in Israel. Um, and my conscience will not let me pass this by. So um, I'm going to tell you now that uh, it, this is all of the cross-stitch. And the only other thing I'm going to do is to say a prayer. Uh, and if you would like to join me uh, in this prayer, I would love that. But if you don't want to, that's okay too. Uh, and I hope I see you again. Um, for those of you who are staying around for the prayer, um, this is not intended to be anything political at all. Uh, it is only a prayer for mercy. Okay? Heavenly Father... We are so, so grateful for your love and your strength and your grace that you share with us. We thank you for the beauty that's all around us right now, and we pray for those who don't have that. We pray for those who are looking at bombed-out buildings, who are grieving for family members who have died, for friends who are lost, um, for all of those who are prisoners, wherever they are whether it's in the Gaza Strip or whether it's in Israel, we just pray for the people, Lord. We know that every single one of us is a child of yours and that you love us all equally. And so we try to do that as well. Sometimes we're not successful, but we try. Lord, we pray for peace. We pray that the war will end, that there will be um, grace given to all, 
that the horrors of war will be stopped and that aid will be given to all of those who need it. We thank you, Lord, that you will intervene in your own time and that this war will someday end. We're counting on that, Lord. We're counting on you. And we pray it in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Okay, thanks, y'all. Glad you came. Uh, if you're new, welcome here. I'm in Hot Springs, Arkansas. If I didn't say that before, I might have. I can't remember. I, the wind is blowing, y'all, and I have zebra grass. Some of you might call it pampas grass. All across the front of my house by the road. And it's just blowing. It's so beautiful. It's like a ballerina dancing. Um, anyway, it's gorgeous. And if you've been watching me for a long time, I thank you so much. For those of you who reached out to me and said, where are you? Um, please know that I'm, I'm doing fine. Um, we're just dealing with the battles of aging and all the things that come with that. Uh, I've mentioned before that my hip is bad, but it's so much better with the steroid shots. So, Y'all, I feel like a new person. Still having some back issues, but they're fine. I can, I'm walking a little bit, and I'm doing everything I want to do, or mostly everything. Last weekend was homecoming. My son is a high school football coach, and his daughter was a homecoming maid. So we drove about a three-hour drive up into northwest Arkansas, north central sort of, uh, and stayed at an Airbnb up close to a winery on top of a mountain. And it was wonderful. It was just it was just an ordinary little house and we enjoyed it so much and we got to watch the ball game, which unfortunately was a disaster. But I really went for the homecoming. My son knows that my a mother's heart will not take football games with close scores. He laughs at me about that, but I told him if he could just make it 40 to nothing, I'd be happy. And that's about the only way I'm going to be happy. I don't want it to be close ever. Um, anyhow, uh, I'll, both my daughters went and um, they, we went to my son's house on Saturday and shared a meal with them and met a new boyfriend and got to see all the kids and, uh, you know, it's... Those are the things that make life so joyful, and we had a wonderful time doing that. Um, I don't think, you know, as the weather gets a little bit worse, it's supposed to get really cold next week, and there are only a couple more ball games, so we may not get to go to another one uh, just because we, we don't do uh, heat or cold sitting out. We don't do that well. Um, so we'll be staying home. Otherwise... Um, Things are great. Um, Jerry's feeling well. We had a bout with his blood pressure for a while, and it's back down now and looks good. And, um, you know, life is just good. It's uh, So I'm thankful. I'm very thankful. And I'm most thankful today for all of you who watch my videos. I can't tell you what it means to me. I have made so many friends all over the United States. Uh, and, and across the world. And um, when you're a stay-at-home person like me, that means the world. So thank you to all of you, and God bless. Bye-bye.